So last time we looked at uh, completing the square, and make sure you check out uh, that lesson over there if you haven't uh, already. But I want to now talk about how completing the square relates to what we now know as the quadratic formula. And I suppose when you think about formulas you see in a maths class, uh, we often think, oh, okay, they've just kind of plucked this out of somewhere, and it gives us this result, um, and that's all we need to know for it. Interestingly, though, formulas have a lot of history to them. And this is no exception, right? Uh, could the quadratic formula uh, was not a modern kind of idea. Uh, ancient Babylonians, uh, ancient Indians, and Greeks, and a whole heap of other people had their own form of the quadratic form. They all help us achieve the same thing. Uh, but it's interesting to see that everyone came up with kind of different explanations or, or different ways of interpreting it. Uh, for example, Euclid, who we have uh, modern geometry to thank for, uh, came up with a kind of geometrical or a visual interpretation of this. And we've seen how that can come about when we're completing the square. Uh, the one that we're going to look at today, uh, Henry Heaton, is kind of credited for the first uh, modern publication of this. But uh, as we know, a whole heap of other people have discovered this on their own as well, in different forms. Okay, so completing the square and the quadratic formula, how do they relate together? Remember, the completing the square was allowing us to find solutions to quadratic equations. The quadratic equation, um, or the quadratic formula now, though, is a way to generalize this. So if I take any quadratic formula, and we usually write it in this form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So this could be any kind of quadratic equation um, with the values a, b, and c as, as coefficients or a constant here. Right? I should be able to find some form that allows me to solve it. <clears throat> and we're going to have to use our completing the square methods in order to do this. So remember our completing the square methods. We had really three steps that we need to take. We first need to halve the coefficient of the linear variable. And in this case, that's represented by x. The next thing we needed to do was take that and square it and then add it to both sides. Okay, so that's um, the process of completing the square. It's allowing us to not only create a perfect square, uh, but actually solve these equations. So let's do that for something like this here, right? Okay, so how can we complete the square on this uh, quadratic equation here? Well, I want to go through all those uh, steps that I am um, usually going to do for a numerical example. But before I start doing that, um, this one's slightly different because I've got uh, ax squared here. And usually when I want to do this process, I want to have a monic quadratic equation. So I want the coefficient of x squared to just be 1. How can I get that here? Well, if this is a multiplied by x squared, I just need to think about opposite operations. If I divide every term by a, that way, um, I'll divide this a through, and I can have a monic quadratic equation. So divide everything by a, that would just be bx on a plus c on a equals to 0. <coughs> cool. Now, again, uh, using completing the square, I want to have that constant to the other side. So I'm just going to move that over as well. Subtract both sides by C on A. And now I want to think, all right, here's the first step. I want to halve the coefficient of that linear variable x. So I'm thinking, I'm looking at this expression, I'm trying to think, what's the coefficient here? I mean, the coefficient is the number or value uh, in front of that x. What's that over here? Hmm. Maybe if I write this another way, instead of writing bx on A, I could also write that as b over A times x. That would be the same thing. So now hopefully it's a bit clearer that this actually is your coefficient. This is what's in front of the x. But I want to take half of that. So halving something you can think of as dividing by 2. Or maybe more helpful for us, we can multiply it by half. And that's going to be more helpful because now I can simplify that a bit nicer. I can say that's b over 2a. Okay. So b over 2a, I've got half the coefficient. Now I want to square it and then add it to both sides. So that would be, in this case, if I'm squaring that and adding to both sides, I would write it as b over 2a all squared and add that to both sides. Okay. All right. <coughs> now it's starting to come together. Um, 
The reason why I've written it like this, rather than expanding this out just yet, is because remember, what's the goal of this? The goal is that at the end of the day, I get x is equal to something. In order to do that, uh, I have this trinomial, and I want to factorize that. Well, it's a bit tricky to use PSF here because we've got some expressions. But the beauty of completing the square is if I write in this format, I know because this sign uh, is a positive symbol, then I can just write this as x plus b over 2a all squared. And b over 2a is uh, what that term is inside that one there. So uh, that's one way you can make your process a bit quicker. This one I can expand out there, and I will group together. Expand that out, you get b squared over 4a squared. Now this one, we usually want things under a common denominator, so let me do that now. I'm just going to group everything up. So I've got denominator of a here and denominator of 4a squared. If I want a common denominator, I could multiply the top and bottom here by 4a, and that would uh, have that denominator becoming 4a squared. So that would be 4ac on the numerator, 4a squared on the denominator, plus b squared on 4a squared. Now, uh, now I can just put these together. Uh, usually we kind of want a positive term at the front. So I'm actually going to swap these around. And let's go, keep going over the top here. x plus b over 2a all squared equals 2. Um, now I'm going to swap these around. I'm going to put them under a common denominator over there. And we've got 4a squared there. Great. OK. Now remember, what's the goal? The goal is x equals to something. So now I'm going to take the square root of both sides to get rid uh, of that square there. And so now I'll get the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared. Now remember, when I take uh, the square root, if I apply that as an operation, I actually have to consider two cases, the positive and negative case. So I'm going to put that there. And then uh, one more step. I can take this over to the other side, negative b on 2a plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared. Now, if you're familiar with the quadratic formula, this isn't quite the form that you recognize. Uh, we actually have to do one extra step, and that's if you look at this denominator here, you'll notice that these are actually square numbers, right? Uh, the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of a squared is just a. So I can actually simplify that a bit nicer. If I just look, take the square root of that denominator component, I'll actually get this. Okay. And I'm just going to leave it there for one moment because, interestingly, uh, this is a bit of a side note, but the quadratic formula has a lot of different things hidden within inside it. So not only is there a bit of history there, but actually, if you look inside this quadratic formula, this section, you might recognize this formula. This is uh, the equation for the axis of symmetry of a uh, parabola. And this equation here is the formula for a discriminant, which is something you might learn a bit later on. So even within our formulas, there are some interesting uh, hidden kind of signs to find there. Uh, let me just put this all together. This is under a common denominator, so I can just group them all up. So you get negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And this is the modern quadratic formula that you might be used to seeing. OK, so that's how we can take our process of completing the square for a general quadratic equation, and we end up ourselves with that uh, formula there. So it's really cool to see that uh, so many years ago they discovered something like this, but even now we can use these algebraic tools and these ideas and come up with these formulas ourselves to see how they uh, really work.